Eric Rodebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. We're gonna do a five minute deep dive. And what we're gonna look at is the exceptions to the overtime rule. So I've done uh, videos like this over the years. It keeps coming up, so maybe more people need to pay attention and I don't wanna see people get in trouble, especially, I, I always like eyes wide open. So if you're gonna violate these rules, at least do it knowingly instead of doing it accidentally. So here's the way it works. Excluding independent contractors, right? So we're talking about employees. Now, a lot of employers still make that mistake on purpose or on accident, um, but the, the distinction is, am I setting their schedule? Am I controlling the person? If I'm controlling them, then they're an employee, and now they're entitled to have taxes withheld, and they're entitled to have the employer contribute to employment taxes, federal um, unemployment insurance, and Medicare, and so, the real and social security and so then the question is okay now we're just talking about employees who's entitled to a set to a salary and who's entitled to being paid hourly and the short answer is everybody is entitled to hourly unless you fit one of three exceptions and there's three okay so here they are so the first one is executive Okay, so an executive, it's kind of self-explanatory. You're running the company and you really have the ability to hire, fire, and make administrative decisions that will change the company. So if I decide to close the office, that's an executive level decision. That pretty much means I'm an executive. I'm probably entitled to being paid uh, a salary. Um, and the second exception is what we call administrative. Think of managerial. Can I either make decisions or is my input given serious consideration and do I have independent authority to help change the, the organization of the company? And so you can see some overlap, but a good example would be the CEO is obviously an executive, but how about the branch manager who runs the branch and has authority to build his team and to decide on vacation hours and, and other things running a, a significant part of the company? And that's the one where we end up in a lot of trouble. Now, let me just say the third one to get out of the way. The third one is professionals. So your accountants, your lawyers, your architects, there's an explicit exception for them. So lawyers generally are paid salary, not hourly. So here's where the mistake often gets made. So the company has the 40 hour a week front desk reception person, and they just go to them and say, hey, you know what, from now on, I'd rather pay you a salary. I don't wanna pay you hourly. I don't wanna to have to keep track of time. It's so expensive. I have to buy a time card. Um, I, we have to keep all this record keeping. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you a job title. I'm gonna call you the office manager. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna agree that your salary is whatever 40 hours a week at your current hourly rate is. So let's just use round numbers. So if somebody's being paid $20 an hour, then we'll just say, hey, you're gonna be entitled to $800 a week flat. It'll be the same you'll be salary, now you're an employee, so obviously we'll do withholdings for taxes and whatever, um, but we'll just agree on that. And by the way, most companies pay every two weeks, which is another trap that companies fall into, because they'll say something silly like, well, overtime is if you work more than 80 hours over a two week period. I'm just telling you all that is not the law. The law is each 40 hour, seven day week is, is considered independently. So just imagine the fact pattern, I work 50 hours in week one and 30 hours in week two. On the 80 hour scale, I did not pass 80 hours, but on the overtime scale, I'm owed 10 hours of overtime. Now, that's for my hourly people. So let's go back to my receptionist, I'm calling her the office manager, and I'm gonna try to shoehorn in to one of these definitions. Well, she's obviously not a professional, okay? Um, she's not an executive. She's not hiring and firing people, okay? Um, is she exercising independent judgment that um, with respect to matters of significance, that's the actual wording in the law, independent judgment with matters of significance. Now, if you could make a strong argument that yeah, she actually heads a whole other team of receptionists and she has a lot of responsibilities in the office and she's the one signing contracts with vendors and she's the one negotiating contracts on behalf of the firm, then okay, then you're making a pretty decent argument that this person does more than just the reception type job. So what it's gonna come down to in these cases is the actual job duties. And then it's like, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So if it really looks like it's a receptionist person, they have to be paid hourly. You have to keep track of time. They're entitled to overtime. Even if you tell them don't work overtime, you still have to keep time records because if they sue you and you don't have time records, you will lose. 
Um, so obviously a lot to unpack here. If you guys have employees and you want to put people on salary, make sure you do it the right way. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions.